Hello peoples. Welcome to the first video in the business development series. This series will deviate from what is expected of an entry-level investment banking analyst and will be more oriented towards entrepreneurs or those engaged in operating businesses. In this video we will just be exploring how the model works and how to manipulate inputs. It will be the first in a series that uses the same template or some version of it. The videos that follow will show how to build a template like this one and how to do it quickly and show how some more complex formulas while perhaps a bit intimidating initially, are actually very simple and can save you crazy amounts of time. It's a bit difficult to see what's happening here, so I thought I'd provide a visual representation of what this model's doing. And in this model, let's assume you own a brick and mortar business and that out of this business, you sell a product, some kind of widget or perhaps food. Maybe it's a pet store, parrots, um, or maybe just coffee, really delicious coffee. And that this is how you make a living, how you make money. And that lately you've decided you'd like to try and make more of it. So you think, well, I could just open more locations, but this becomes a burden to plan for. And you want to know what will the future of your business look like and what kind of investment will it require? This model will help us answer those questions. But before we start examining the data, Let's walk through the model and look at each tab to understand what's here. The first tab, Biz Plan Inputs, is just an output page that shows what's taking place in the model and provides a few options for additional inputs. The next tab, titled PL Data, PL stands for Profit and Loss and is a bit like an income statement. On this tab, you will input revenue and the associated expenses for your current location. This represents the business you have presently. And the column next to it, titled Sub, is used to put together the revenue and expense assumptions for new locations. From top to bottom, you'll see revenue, cost of goods sold, expenses that are linked to revenue, which is to say they grow as a percentage of revenue, your fixed costs, and finally, the build-out costs associated with the new location. Because your current location is already operating, there will be no associated build-out costs. On the tab that follows, titled New Sub Assump, or Assumptions, we have a few inputs to walk through. The first is a column representing the start date for each new location. As we work with this model, it's going to be interesting to see how the start date affects the cash required. If you think about it, multiple locations on a short timeline will require a greater amount of upfront capital because your build-out costs will accumulate. Then below, under Revenue Growth Assumptions, you have an input for what you believe will be the first month's revenue for each new location. And then below that, the first month of operation and the monthly growth rate for revenue in the first four years. The next tab is titled Combined Income Statement. And actually, you know what, it'll make a lot more sense to return to this after explaining the tabs that follow. So let's move to location one. And what this tab does is take the data from the two tabs titled PL data and new sub assum and create a five year monthly projection for your current location. Each of the tabs that follow do the same thing for all of your new locations. And what you will notice as you tab through them is that all of the tabs are identical with the exception of the date at the top. Since the model currently only has five new locations coming online, the tab titled Sub 6 shows NM where you would otherwise see the date. Having the data organized on identical PL tabs makes it easy to combine all of this data on the tab titled Combined Income Statement. This tab is using the dates on all of the new locations to pull the corresponding information for each new location. This is done for each month for each projected year. And then at the end of the monthly projections, all of these columns are summed so that you can look at the annual data. And this way you can see what the combined revenue is, what your combined gross margin is, all expenses, and finally your profit. So having walked through the model, we can create a few examples to get a better idea of how it all works together. To do that, let's look at a few different business plan options. I always think it's helpful to provide context when you're changing inputs in a financial model. So in this video, we're going to be looking at three completely fictional business models. The first will provide tropical fruit baskets. 
The business model is really pretty simple. Acquire large amounts of tropical fruit, like this papaya, and then sell it as an arrangement in a basket. This will be our high volume, low margin business model. And your place of business will look like this. The second business model will be a pizza shop. Each new pizza shop will require a larger initial investment. You need to buy ovens, kitchen equipment, and employ skilled labor like this chef. And of course, you'll have a storefront suitable for pizza. The third business model will be a cosmetic surgery center. The build-out costs will be substantially greater here for each new location, including hospital beds and surgery computers. While far more costly to get started, this will also be the most profitable business plan. Hmm, now that I'm making the video, I don't think the surgery center should have a cat. All right, so let's go back to Excel and look at the three business plan options we just discussed. And of course, the three fictitious business plans. The first one being the tropical fruit basket. I have a printout of this data in front of me, so now we'll walk through the model and see what these assumptions look like when they're flowing through. So let's tab over to PNL data and we'll input our COGS assumptions for tropical fruit basket model. First line 350,000, then 200,000, and finally 100,000. As we input the data, please note how the model takes these margins and applies them to the new location template. For the sake of simplicity, expenses and fixed expenses will remain the same for all three businesses, which is an otherwise highly unlikely scenario. But your build-out costs will vary drastically. And in this example, we'll input $25,000 for each line item. Now what you may have noticed is that this income statement or P&L statement shows build-out costs, which as we showed includes equipment, as an expense. This is because without a balance sheet or cash flow statement, we cannot properly account for those purchases without the supporting schedules. If this model gets a lot of traction, we'll add a balance sheet and cash flow statement in a future video. And just before I move on, I want to point out that these expenses are also coded as inputs because making a change here will actually change every PL statement in the model. And as a quick example, let's change COGS1 to labor and then tab over where you'll see labor in place of where COGS1 was previously and that this applies to all of the income statements. Next we'll move on to the tab new sub assump. And here you will see the start dates for each new location. We're going to keep these the same for all three business plans, which will make it easier to compare all the outcomes. But the first month of revenue and the monthly growth rate for revenue will be different in each case. Here we will assume that the first month of revenue is $50,000 and that your growth rates are 1%, 1%, 0.75%, and half a percent. On the right hand side you'll see the income statements and recall that in this model we're assuming each location taps out at one million dollars in revenue per year. So the growth rates are designed to take you from your first month of revenue and approach full capacity over the five year period. And in this model these are the only inputs required so we can go back to the first tab and look at the outcome. Here you'll see the assumptions we just used and under profit generated the sum of all profit or loss in the five-year projection, and then profit or loss by year. Under year one, you'll see a loss of $368,000, but it's important to look at the monthly statements as well. On the tab Combined Income Statement, if we scroll down to Project Level Profit, and then look at the sum for the first six months, you'll see a loss of $384,000. Not substantially greater, but still greater. This is because the remainder of the year shows greater profitability. So let's go back to our business plan and look at the second option. Here we're going to show a greater level of profitability, but also larger upfront build-out costs. Also, in this business plan, our first month of revenue will be lowered to reflect that each new location will not be fully operational on account of the build-out period. Normally, you would not show any revenue overlapping with the build-out period, but this is a simplified assumption we're making. Finally, I think it will be interesting to note how a slight increase in profitability, even though it requires slightly larger build-out costs, 
will create a substantially greater outcome. And as a quick reference before we input the data, make a mental note of the fact that in year five, in the previous business model, you have approximately $200,000 in earnings. To spare you from having to watch me input data again, I'm gonna input the information for this model and edit it out and then come back to the output page. So here we have the pizza business plan assumptions running through the model. And under profit generated, you will note how a slightly greater build out cost, offset by improved margins, yields to a far better result in the fifth year. Whereas previously you had approximately $200,000 in profit in year five, now you're nearly approaching a million dollars in profit. This is the last business model we'll be looking at. Here we will again show slightly increased profitability but far greater build-out costs than any of the other models. The surgery center assumptions will also start with the first month of revenue at the lowest value. And again, to spare you the process of inputting data, I'll edit that part out and come back to the output page. And so here we have the last business plan running through the model. And you will see that in year one, the build-out cost is reflected in the losses. At nearly $2.5 million in losses in the first year, this will require a sizable investment. But in year five, you are also generating the greatest amount of profit. So let's say that you decide this is your area of expertise and that you want to move forward with this plan, but the cost is too great. What you can do is move to tab new sub sum and space out the start date of your new locations. So let's do precisely that. We'll move the second location to 2016, the third to 2017, and the last two will follow in consecutive months. And now back on the output page, you can see how approximately $2.5 million in losses in the first year have been reduced to approximately $1.4 million spread over the first three years instead. There is a lot of additional information to be taken into consideration. For example, if you were to secure a lot of equipment financing, the initial cash required would drop substantially and your yield would be far greater. Depending on reaction from users, a future video might add a balance sheet to explore this in greater detail. Also, recall that you can see the results on a monthly basis each large loss representing the launch of a new location. And finally, you can see revenue catching up with expenses as well. There are a lot of different combinations and feel free to play around with the model. After all, if anything goes wrong, you can download it again. And for now, that's it.